Hello. I'm waiting for my bro to come and join me. There was some problem with the live, so let's see how this all works. <laughs> I'm joining from my cousin's house today. So what's up, guys? What's up, bro? I'm waving at you guys. Let's just see. I'm not supposed to be hosting this live. This is supposed to be my friend and my bro who is hosting this. <laughs> so we'll see if this works. <laughs> hey, I might have to kick you off. Naughty. Hello, Casey. How's it going? Thank you for joining. Welcome, welcome. Welcome, welcome, closed hand prayer emojis. I'm literally at my uh, amazing cousin Mustafa's house right now, so I cannot, I don't have my little stand, so I'm holding the phone right here. And uh, there you go. Okay, view request. Here we go, my bro. Accept. There you go. How are you? Well, so I'm, I'm, I'm good. I am so glad that, that this actually worked. Of Me course, too. you being the star, you figured it out. Thank you. No, no, no. I mean, I'm not sure what happened. I'm sorry about that. I was, no, no, sorry. I was requesting, and, and then I said send request, and then um, it says re request was not sent. It was like an error message. I don't know why I kept saying that, so... So this is your thing. This is your interview. So I should stop talking. You got to. Uh, you got. I'm gonna let you speak. No, 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 no. I think I think the whole universe just just wants you to lead because you are the powerhouse here. So so of course it just worked out the way that it should do. I'm so glad to have you here. I'm so glad to see your face right here in front of me. I'm honored. I'm honored. You How you doing? You too. Thank you so much. It's uh, my honor. I'm trying to make sure that I can try to make, minimize all these uh, chatty things so that I can see your face properly. So let me figure that out first. You can see that I'm pretty bad at um, Instagram as well. So anyways, I'm good. I can see your eyes. That's enough. Okay, windows to the soul. Uh -huh. yeah. All right, I can go back a little bit. Yeah, that's good. Maybe. So Yeah, I'm good. Thank you. To, yesterday was actually my first um, evening overnight. Actually, not my first ever, but the first since I've really began my little move, uh, which I'm about to be moving and migrating west. So going to be traveling for the next however long that is, takes me to get west in America. So yeah, it's been exciting and it's a, it's a new day and it's great to be talking to you on a new day. It feels like a new beginning. So. It is beautiful. It is beautiful. I think I know, I know about your move a little bit, if not a lot. Uh, because since since I I, I did uh, uh, speak about it a little bit uh, just earlier since when I've been trying to 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 chase you down to get you to sit down with us and teach us I, I think it's been months and, and I haven't stopped harassing you I'm so sorry about that <laughs> it's not harassing you've been friendly and it's it's really cool to uh, it's just cool to connect you know I I was thinking on the way over here that we were texting some we were texting at some point and uh, you know, I was saying bro and I don't say bro that often because I'm from England and we don't really do the whole bro, bro, bro. Actually in London they do, but I didn't grow up speaking that way, but it's just funny how with certain people um, that comes very naturally. So with you, the, the kind way that you've connected with my work has uh, made it feel very natural to think of you in that way and speak to you in this familiar way so even though this is the first time we're doing this um definitely feels natural so thank you and uh and no teaching this like i said to you this is this is a conversation so i love that also i really uh appreciate it because uh, as you know and uh, i'm sure you remember that since the first time i contacted you i called you Ustad because as you said that's that's a whole feeling you get from from someone and the vibe they give out. And I've, I was raised in a family full of teachers. So from high school to, to Army Academy, Air Force Academy and all that, they were all instructors or teachers. And I know the feeling. 
so, so the first time I spoke to you, I regarded you as a teacher. And you called me a bro, and I was so overwhelmed, and I was so happy, like a kid, if, if the teacher <laughs> is really friendly. And you're like, oh, I'm the favorite here now. I'm so happy. Oh, get out of here, man. Get out of here. But yeah, I know what you're talking about. When, the, when you can call your teacher by the first name, that's always a nice, uh, that's when exactly. you know that you're cool with them. That's nice. Yeah, I've been thinking about school days recently, having a lot of dreams and stuff. So sometimes old friends will come back in my dreams and I'll see, you know, um, faces of people from England that I grew up with that I haven't seen. I was just thinking of a guy today, his name was James. And I, I realized that, you know, you have people at school who are in the center of your circle or friendships. Then you have people who are really maybe popular, but they're not your friends. And then there are people who are just somewhere over there on the periphery. And I was remembering this kid today called James. He had blonde hair down to here, this is in the 90s, you know. And he had that kind of like David Beckham look, um, 90s Beckham look. And um, he used to love Frank Sinatra, but he was a bit of a, he was a lad, you know. So he was a bit of a tough guy, I think. And I just was thinking of him randomly as I was working, doing some manual work on my van drilling some stuff for the thoughts come to you. And I was like, I wonder what happened to James. I wouldn't be surprised if he got into like Frank Sinatra because he used to sing him all the time when we were like messing wow. up. So isn't it cool? We go out of each other's orbits and we may never see these certain people again, but they might come back to you in a, in a thought or in a, uh, in a something. So, Hey, we're all connected. Eh? Me, and you, me and you had never met. You're in, on the other side of the world yeah. and I'm on the other side of the world. So, but but as as we can see, it's a very small world because uh, somehow we just I I just got to know about you and you know, I actually dared to contact you and talk to you and and here we are and that day isn't far that we might be sitting in the in the same room and having some tea and I could learn some more because even there you shared something very uh, very important and that this, this, this person you knew, he, he had like long blonde hair like David Beckham. He used to listen to Frank Sinatra, but he was kind of a tough guy as well. This is a, yeah. lot, of, a lot of things going on at the same time. And, and, and that's the beauty of, of being in the uh, teenage years of your life, I think. You just want to do everything and, and you see yourself and a lot of things being involved. Uh, Osada Kant. Without further ado, because I know you're very busy, I know you're very tired, uh, and, and I have tired. to remind, <laughs> I I I have to remind your friends and my friend who who were watching this that how beautiful uh, Oroy Mistok and his soul is. That actually we we kind of because I was in such a hurry, uh, I kind of planned this yesterday, and yesterday, Ustad Mistok was actually moving. So he said that it's all good. Okay, till 9 p.m. I'll be done by my move and we can do it. It's all good. And then later on, it hit me. I was like, dude, how can you do this? Don't, don't do this. Just do it some other day, some other day. We can wait for some more. But also, I really appreciate it. I really appreciate it. Before I could go into our session here, uh, I, I, I did introduce a little bit about all these things that you have done. All these, these these books that you have written, all these music albums that you have composed and written, recorded, documentaries, uh, poetry, uh, you have done journalism, you have even, uh, you have even taught classes in a university level. Yeah. Uh, all these things, all these things that some people can't even even do one of these art forms or to achieve one of these things in their whole lifetime. And you've done all this. So after all this, how do you feel to be on Voices from the Mountains finally? <laughs> I'm happy. I'm happy to be here because I made it, right? I made it, bro. No, it's, it's so cool, man. Thank you. What, what, what can you say when you, uh, you know what? We're joking about it, but seriously, man, like, you know what? There are many different ways to look at success. Like what you said is accurate, you know? And I've, I've got to a point now where I don't do fake, uh, I, I've mentioned that word chapulusi, such a good Afghan word. I really don't, <laughs> I, I don't like it. I don't like the flattery, that, not, that, not to you, but I'm saying I don't do that of course, anymore. Of course. Of course. And you're right. 
you know, like what I've been able to do is by God's, you know, grace and blessing is, is unusual. And I don't mind saying that because it's not me, you know what I mean? That's, that's a divine gift um, from, from God. Uh, as a divine gift would be so and we all have those right so and so you know you look at, at the same time as you're very aware as the nine as the nine followers in here or the nine people in this room are aware i'm not uh you know i'm not someone who's you know quote unquote blown up right and so we're joking about like you're you're making that joke about like hey i'm here on voices for mountains uh podcasts you know i've made it but it really is though, you know, because when you don't have that kind of, um, and I've never been one to run after like fame or anything. It's just not, it's not who I am. It's not how I operated right from the start when I was doing music in England and I was having a lot of early success, but I always kind of, whenever I had like a big review or a big, you know, moment of exposure, it was always like a moment of deep introspection for me. And like, is this what I want? And a lot of times I would actually go the other way, right? I would do a little, left turn and be like, uh, uh, cause I'm not, and I, and I know people I've mentioned before the names of people who were coming up at the same time as me in the music scene who were pretty famous now. And they attacked it with that desire for that fame. And so, you know, there's this ayah in the Quran, it says each, each party, I'll say in English, the translation, each party is happy with what they have. It's in the context of it. It's in the context of a wider, uh, thing in the Quran but also ayahs can be taken individually and it's like yeah everyone gets what they want and so for me talking to someone like you right now that is right up there you know because it's like we're people who, we're people who have aligned we're people who've come together in a way that's very organic that's success it's success indeed, indeed. You know? so the but again obviously this this uh, as I <clears throat> as I had expected, and this is going to be a very uh, enlightening uh, session for all of us, even though if you say those, those nine people or 10 people, trust me, we, we started oh, no. this thing, 12 now, God bless, there you go. Uh, we started this thing not, not for something for today, but my intention has always been and will be with this whole initiative is, is to appeal to the youngsters who are either uh, very young today or will be born tomorrow and they're going to come back and see people like yourself uh, and learn about our culture, tradition, and our own people. Be it Afghanistan could be anywhere down the line at that point of future, but they will know about their people and I think they can learn a lot from uh, masters like yourself and artists so so f for me the big deal is that we can leave some trace for them to uh, totally. come back to the roots totally i love that that's what it is that's what we're doing we're uh, it's almost a byproduct right because what is art for me it's it's being in like you said it's being a teen we were talking about teenagers before when we were at school. i was talking about school to me um and i was just having a conversation with my cousin's um sister wife's sister here who's in her 20s and we we're chatting and i was like yeah when you're in your 20s you know you're kind of firing on all cylinders everything you can take on many things at once and i was kind of making the point about the 30s and the mid 30s and late 30s being more a little bit at least for me about like focusing in on one thing at a time and really the amount of benefits that you can get from that but um but you know uh what's interesting is that i've forgotten the point that i was making so uh, I <laughs> it's about uh, it's about actually leaving some traces oh, of today for the yeah. future. Okay, right. But what I was saying was interesting is that that's a it's actually it's what it's all about is leaving stuff for the kids and the future, the future generations, leaving these amazing time capsules. But that's a byproduct, right? For me, sure. because as an artist, for me, what I'm doing is I am in that moment. I am that teenager, right? And I put myself in these moments, like my van that I'm in now has got a music studio and I'm putting myself in the mode, in the place to create music, right? And when I'm doing that, I'm present with that music. It's like me and you, we're sitting here talking to each other now and I'm trying, you know, as much as possible not to get distracted by my imagination, which can go forever, but to look at you and to be present with you. And so 
you know, everything that comes as a benefit from art or creativity, it's, it's kind of a side effect from one thing, which is presence. You are just, you are just with, you know, in my case, I'm with the drum machine, I'm with the guitar, whatever. If I'm writing, I'm just, I'm in that space. There's nowhere else that I'm at. If my phone rings, I'm not, I mean, I'm very good at ignoring my phone. I do it a lot, actually. Like it can be on silent mode or not on silent mode. Yeah, but I'm just like, it doesn't matter. I'm just, I don't hear it if I'm in that space. You know what I mean? So, yeah. So, yeah, beautiful stuff that we can leave stuff for future generations, but it's only going to have that power if the this, this stuff that was done was done with that intention, is done with that presence, Indeed. just like this conversation. Indeed. Which, you know? Indeed. 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 Beautifully said. Well, Stod, uh, uh, I'm just loving this. Obviously, I can't have enough of this, but as a metalhead, as an Afon metalhead, right? So, so, so I will kind of try to explore some, some things about Ustad Yusuf that maybe most people do not know about him or they haven't really figured out or Ustad Yusuf hasn't actually brought it out, exposed. Well, I'm curious so I'll now. Try very I'll, I'll try to do that. I'll try to do that. All right. So, so, so we got some, some icebreaker uh, little questions here. You can just answer them, whatever comes to your mind. Oh, right really? Away. You're going to do this? I love this. Okay, yes, do. yes. We, we're going to be doing that. Also. All right. So, <laughs> so first of all, if you could go back in time and you could meet one historical figure, who would that be and what would you ask him or her? I don't want to be boring, but you know... I, um, or I don't want to say what you would expect me to say, but it would, I would. You can say anything you feel like. It's all about you. Yeah, it would be the prophet, bro. It would be the prophet, Muhammad. Salah. It would be so the prophet. And, and I, I have heard this answer from a couple of other of my guests as well, obviously. Yeah. It's, it would be a privilege for our office. But what would you ask him? If you could ask him one thing. <laughs> I mean, um, if I if I was in the presence of the Prophet, I, I don't think I could speak. But with my eyes, I would ask him to. I would ask him uh, to 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 help me to be with him for the for in consciousness, in mind, in heart for the rest of my life because. You know, something that I don't want to say. Again, I didn't want to get too deep and serious, but that's what it is with um, spirituality is, you know, it, it's it's being in the heart of someone, right? When you love someone, being in their heart or them being in your heart and everything good comes from that, right? That's what it is. All the benefit comes, uh, Shanakshman, the, the sort of, one of the founding pillars of um, the Nakshbandi Tariqa, which is the one that's been, you know, the biggest part of my life for 11 years, 12 years, said that all the, all the goodness comes from togetherness, from meeting in groups. Okay. So that's what it is. So, yeah, I would just like to be, you know, I like to be, I would love to be, isn't it a beautiful thing to be in the heart or in the mind of someone beautiful? That someone is the most perfect. beautiful thing. Yeah. That is the that, most beautiful. That's what I could yeah. think of. But if you ask me my, who, who is the 14th or 16th after all the prophets and everything, I'd give you some more interesting answers, you know. So maybe you could ask me the 32nd person that I would meet or the 14th. Okay, who would, be, who would be the 50th? 50th. The 50th. The 50th. I think it would be, um, I think it would be Scotty Pippin. Scotty Pippin. Oh, okay. Oh, <laughs> the, basketball the, the, the basketball player. I, was thinking, I know this name. I, I know this name. Scotty Pippin. Okay. Okay. He's what would you ask him? I, I would what ask him, him, yeah, if I could speak to Scotty Pippin, because he's in the news a bit recently. But, um, you know, my cousin and I were just talking tonight about how we loved him. We loved him when we were watching the Bulls in the 90s. And I was saying there are times that I loved him more than Michael Jordan because he was so um, graceful. He played so beautifully. I'm a big basketball fan. It's 
the sport that kind of yeah kind of saved my life i guess when i was young and so when i would watch him come up the court he would dribble up the court you know and he just looked like i don't know how to describe it but you know if you can imagine a young you know artist in me that hadn't fully formed yet i was 16 15 and it was a swirl of emotions and i would just watch the way that he dribbled the ball the way that honestly to get spiritual again the way that god had created this being his limbs right. the, yeah. he was so elegant the way he moved he was like a gazelle and he was not very expressive um but it made you kind of it gave him this mystique and this aura that and the media never spoke to him they didn't want to speak like michael jordan i always had the microphones in his face yeah. but it was like he was something else man and um he's been getting a lot of uh, tough stuff in the media recently so i would just say i love you pippin you're the man you're the best that's it that's it hopefully inshallah someday you will get to meet him and tell him yeah. you love him and and i'm pretty sure that that once he gets to know you he will be on it <laughs> he's sweet thank you bro All right, so he's my he's my 50 that's that's your 50 all right so <clears throat> Second one, your favorite meal that you could eat forever. I know you are a Sufi, so so you would go for something something really simple like kopon kebab, lentil soup. No, not even kebab, man. Lentil soup. Lentil soup. Yeah. Beautiful. All right. Yeah, I, I love that. Bro. If if I was on an island, but I mean, no, man. Any food would get boring, wouldn't it? After a while. So I don't well, know. Well, if there was one thing that you can eat forever. I don't know if there is one meal. You know when I was I, working... Sorry, go ahead. I go with uh, lubia always. Oh, okay, good. Yeah, I, I, I always go with that. Yeah. But well, I have my favorites. Different. Yeah, I have my favorites. I love mantu, I love okay. rajma There uh, you go. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So those are my faves maybe and then a bit of kadu burani every now and then my mom makes that very nicely. Burani, oh, burani <laughs> kadu with some uh black pepper on it oh, yeah oh, beautiful beautiful i think i think pumpkin was one of the favorite favorite meals of uh of the world uh i may have heard that i don't know i could not yeah, say, yeah. but that might be true yeah yeah and and it sounds true because it's delicious all right so well what scares you most losing your hearing or losing your vision Oh, that's a good one. Good I work. in 2008, 2008 uh, was the last time in my life and it's now 2021. Is it 2021? Yes, sir. It is. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I get I get confused with the future. I think it's its future. So, okay, so it's 2021 and it's there you go. The man just said it. It's the last time that I stuck um uh what do you call them in america q tips the earbuds the cotton earbuds oh, oh okay oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah yeah that's the last time that i stuck one of those in my ear because i stuck it in my ear and it popped something and i couldn't hear okay and so it and it didn't help that i'd just seen one of my favorite films which was there will be blood i i saw that like three times in the cinema and, and the, the kid in that film loses his hearing so it was in my fresh in my mind and i thought i've done something i've lost my um i've lost my um hearing and it freaked me out so much it really did because you know cuz i i make music and even if i didn't but i mean mostly because of that i think it was just like i suddenly appreciated it so much for two or three days and for whatever reason i didn't see the doctor i didn't go anywhere i just wanted to stay in that i needed to experience that like first of all blind panic second of all like reflection third of all like um what am i going to do fourth if this is for real can i really live without this and so it was a whole cycle for about i think maybe 7 days before i saw a doctor and he said you'll be fine and i think it maybe got better wow. by the end so yeah i would say that because you know seeing is great um but you can see without your eyes so um yeah oh. also, well you can hear too but seeing you know is i saw stuff last night you know i saw a, a fish last night and my father in a dream together moving in a way that is impossible to see in on this planet you see so 
I could do without the eyes, you know, as long as it's not like a red and bloody and stuff like in the films. But yeah. I don't want to, and I don't want an eye patch either, bro. I don't want to. You don't want to go with that whole err look, err pirate look now, okay? Yeah. Because uh, uh, okay. I'm always, I'm always curious about artists, about the vision or hearing, because a while ago, well, years ago, I was working in a club as, as a bouncer. And oh, wow. so it was a brawl, and and I got uh, and I went to intervene, and there was this one kid who was being bashed by these seven other Polynesian big boys. So so I couldn't really control all these seven Polynesian boys, but I went to grab this kid and I covered him. When I covered him, somebody from this group wanted to slap him, and he slapped me. Right. So my earpiece of my radio went inside my ear. Mm. And and the way you lose your balance with that, when you know that that your ear is is blocked, so so that was the night that I kind of always thought about it. What if you lose your hearing? How hard would it be? Yeah, you know, it, it is a very unnatural uh, feeling to it. But you know what's interesting is that when you do it, um, especially that first moment, it is, um, it is a it's like the sound of being underwater. Do you know that sound? Exactly. Remember that sound? Exactly. Of there's a similarity. I, I know in the water. Yeah. Yeah. So there's something there. I don't know what that is. I need to think about that more. I've always kind of thought about that. It's funny that when you do this and you push hard yeah. here, yeah. it's the same sound as when you're underwater. And that's the same sound as when you hear the blood in your own body coursing through. It's exactly. quite miraculous. Exactly. You know? It's quite, <laughs> it's exactly. quite amazing. All right, so uh, there are three things I wanted to ask you, and you can just say which one. So okay. which one would you rather choose, patience or spontaneity? Spontaneity, if I can pronounce this correctly. I can write it. I know what it means. But... Spontaneity, yeah, I got you. Um, I heard, uh, so, yeah, because you cut out for a second. Patience or spontaneity? Oof. That's horrible. Why do you make me choose between these two? What's that? I believe in you. You're our spot. Come on. <laughs> so you want me to choose between patience and, and spontaneity. spontaneity? Well, I think the only way that I can think about that, if I'll slow down for a second, is to think about a time when I was patient. Think about a time when I was spontaneous. My instinct is to say, I just love spontaneity because it's part of who I am. I, it, to me, that's like, to me, life without spontaneity is like a food without salt. It's the same thing or any spice okay. right yeah all right so, yeah the last time i saw my brother he has a baby well she's not a baby anymore but she was um and when i saw her i it was the first time that she was going to see me you know for a long time i jumped behind a bush and you know I, I could see them coming but she hadn't seen me yet so i jumped behind a bush and i started shaking the bush and i just wanted her to have this magical indelible memory so i did i knew that i had to do something very strange in order for her to for that moment to be ingrained in her memory and then i jumped out of the bush and so what is it what was i doing really i was just saying hi to my brother and his daughter but through through spontaneity right creativity something totally weird happened which was so cool so um i think that's good patience is yeah i mean are you ultimately i guess you have to say patience because it's patience <laughs> so oh, wow. you got to be patient understand patience all right this so so is it fair to say that life especially an artist's life is a balance between spontaneous action and patience oh, i like it right. um yeah i think that's there's a lot to that you know because especially as you were getting out in the beginning in your kind introduction you know i i write stuff i've written novels i'm still writing three more actually and i've also done other things like more into immediate things and i've always drawn that line between what being a novelist does to you and compared to like a musician or something okay so i'm both when i'm making music it's so quick everything comes so quickly i mean you make music too you know what it is when you're rehearsing it's a feeling it's a moment it's liquid it comes so fast 
and you know you just gotta you've got to do something with it you got to alchemize it into the sound and you just something magical happens it's so quick you don't even know what just happened at the end of it you look at each other like you've just had some kind of group uh dream or something you're like wow that was really good if you're having a jam or whatever uh or if it's me by myself with my machines i'll be like what just came through me that was amazing i have no explanation for it ah on the other and that comes within seconds on the other hand you know, my first novel took me s something like crazy, like six years to finish and write or five years or four, whatever it was, it was years, right? It was years with a project, with characters, with people. So that teaches you a kind of patience that you cannot replicate, especially today's day and age, you know, with all the Instagrams and the Pinstagrams mm -hmm. and Pinterests and Minterests and, you know. All, all this Tierrests. All these, no, all, all, right. these pinch, all these pincer heads with no rest, <laughs> no one getting any sleep. That's it. All right, beautiful, beautiful. No, so no one's sleeping anymore. Do you know that? No one can no. sleep anymore. No, People can't because, sleep. Exactly because there's something going on on some other part of the world that that they have to know about or they want to follow or they want to keep up to date to it. So so it's either they want to talk or they want to follow somebody who is like, exactly. Speaking. Turn so, bones, so, yeah. so which one would you prefer the most or, or which one would you actually support? Academic knowledge or world experience? Oh, man, world experience is not even close. It's not even close. And I've been to university, you know, I got my master's degree, but it was just like, I remember the feeling when I got my undergrad degree at the award ceremony. And I remember the moment, it probably it might sound corny now, I don't know, but I remember looking at the, thing that they had just given me and i was like this is it this piece of paper really and it it was like a joke almost i was like that's what all this was about so yeah no man real the the, the my teacher always described two kinds of knowledges um so knowledge of knowledge of the paper or like paper knowledge book knowledge or ad work Ilm al adwak is like the paper knowledge or ilm al lisan, which is knowledge of the tongue. It's the same thing. And then, uh, you know, the knowledge of the heart or experiential knowledge, right? And the ilm al qalb, right? The knowledge of the heart, what you experience, what you felt, what you've seen. There's no comparison. It's like if you um, try to describe to someone, you know, what water tastes like if they've never tasted, you know, it's like, Close. tough but you could show it to him and give it to him you know you could Beautiful. give it yeah taste this clear liquid it's quite fantastic i think you might like it might be amongst your top three favorite liquids of all time. <laughs> exactly. yeah. after of course, coke it, obviously that's it that's it. after coke and, and vodka. Diet coke. Oh, oh. yeah of course no doubt no doubt <laughs> all right so so this one is related to your one of your recent posts right so Wow, my recent, Which, I can't believe my post is being quoted back to me. It's such an honor. Hey, Kavak, I mean, I, when I follow you, I follow you, bro, like, like religiously. So, <laughs> which, is more, which is more sexier, hairy men or hairy women? <laughs> bro, you know what I'm going to say, man, because it's, it's all about the uh, getting in touch with our masculine, you see. So look at us, man. Look at you. You've got more black. I got some no, white. no. Yeah, yeah. I don't have a lot, so so I would probably choose the latter because I was always against that whole <laughs> whole uh, thing on me, and I was like, I don't need this, but I prefer it on the gender for sure. <laughs> oh well, yeah, I got I got no problem with the with anyone's hair, any you know. But uh, yeah, there you go. Okay. I was trying to answer it positively for myself. So just self-empowering. I feel like the men, the men need more um, building up these days. So that's why I'm focusing on the men with that one. Fair enough. Yeah. Fair enough. You Women are cool. Women are, are cool. Women are all right. <laughs> uh, I, think, I think your fans who, who are watching and commenting uh, are really not agreeing with that because they, they look so engaged and, and so diehard following you which which i can feel they've been answering your uh questions as well that i'm oh they have I, and seen. I can see that, that they're just answering and it's so beautiful it's so engaging it's it's awesome all right so last one engaging. Last one oh, okay. 
Wow, time is flowing by. Indeed. Uh, so if you were to get an answer for one of these questions, okay. which one would you choose? Is it the meaning of life or God's purpose of existence? <laughs> if I was to get an answer? Yep. It's not my, it's not my place to to demand or ask even or be curious even about God's uh, about God's purpose right rather the opposite it's God's right and God's God created the game right that's how it goes God has created the game and uh, thank you Farah God has created the game and he is um, placing us where he wishes to place us and that's what it is. That's how I look at it. I flipped it. I flipped it. And I'm like, no, nah, I have no right to ask or question of God, no matter what happens. And a lot of tough things did happen, right? And do happen, just like all of us in our life. So, yeah, and it's the meaning of life, I guess. Yeah, I'm not even curious about that. I feel like I know what the meaning of life is. You know what I mean? What is it? Stop. <laughs> Oh, I laughed so much I knocked my cousin's painting over. Um, the meaning of life is um, no. There's there's a lot of meanings to life, you know. There's quite. A do few. we all see, do we all see and find and venture into our way that we see the meaning of life, or there is one meaning to it? No, that's what I'm saying. There are many. Yeah, there are multiples. Exactly. Right. It's just like so, so big... for you for for we'll start and stop. <laughs> What's the meaning of life? The meaning of life is to. If you want to wait on it, it's up to no, you. Because no, no. we're going to go deep. The meaning of life is to be. This is this is it. It's to be yourself. It sounds simple. Sounds really simple. But um, who are you? Yeah. There's. Exactly. In my, in my film, uh, Ocean of Safety, which some lucky people got to see live when it was screened a few years ago, there's this funny moment where I break it down and it's like, it was like all these corny films in the 80s where people be like, who am I? And they're looking in the mirror. It was a very corny thing for a while in films that they used to do that, but it was corny for a reason because that's what everyone f wants to know, wants to feel. And uh, yeah, it's one answer, but... I think it's the most useful answer for Instagram, which is who am I really, you know, who am I beyond these things that I show beyond the clothes that I wear beyond on the beanie, who am I beyond the posts that I post, who am I beyond the friends that I befriend, who am I beyond the parents who raise me even, you know, there's all these, uh, there are all these layers to unpack and we think we know a lot, but we really don't know not nothing really and the more we learn the more we're like damn i still don't know a whole lot so yeah be yourself be yourself be yourself man. oh i love like find yourself is to find god yeah well that's it that's what i'm saying there are many answers you could give and this one for instagram seemed to make the most sense because ultimately okay. that's what it is that's what al-ghazali said yeah the same thing you know no knowledge of the self leads to knowledge of God. It's it's literally exactly. yeah, it's the it's a concurrent wave. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. Thank you very much, Ustada Khan. Um, this was this was a a uh, yes. Uh, oh no, I'm not. I'm just. Oh. I don't know. I do. I make. Oh, weird are you doing the uh, uh, spark thing? Okay, okay. I do that thing, sometimes. Yeah. I I do that uh, lots yeah. of things. Sorry. Cool, cool. Cool. It means I'm happy. Like, when I do this, I'm like moving energy around. It's like I'm good, I'm happy, and I'm giving it back. And I'm sending it with you, you know. Thank you very much, Ustada Khan. All right, so this was a beautiful round of rapid fire. Well, we did stretch it a bit, which, which needed it, because that was the whole purpose to get the meaning out of it. And some questions obviously cannot be answered uh, on a on a on a triggered way so we had to go deep into that all right so so, so so let's come to this this thing which has always fascinated me about multidisciplinary artists and and yourself you're one of the most prolific 
example for me personally at least is is that you have gone through filmmaking poetry writing novels documentary and everything inside that and outside that <clears throat> now most people may venture may have venture would like to in touch with this touch with that and touch with this trying to express themselves when do we think that it is enough that we should choose one form and that's what we need to follow or when can we actually give ourselves the the dare to okay you can try this and this and this and this because some people might get lost trying to try a lot of things yeah well you should never try that's the thing it's like yoda said in star wars don't try just do you shouldn't be trying to do anything and that's the thing is that when i talked about presence earlier right i've never tried to be a writer a novelist a poet i've never tried to be a musician i've just followed what i've been blessed enough to have the, to have the clarity to follow what i like you know and it's it's back to my father you know that he gave me the opportunity to live and be raised in a house where i could follow my passions where he had music where i could listen to it where he heard me like mixing stuff for the first time and he kind of encouraged me you know and so uh, to be raised like that you know but i mean all i was doing was just playing that's all art is and you know a lot of people want to make it into something really big a lot of people want to be like activists and like change the world that's all great but you know um if you don't if you don't do something because you find it fun uh you you you're really not doing anything you're just basically playing you know you're playing around not in a good way um you're just rehearsing it's like you're reading other people's lines but you're not reading your own lines it's it has to come from you and then after that everything is good it it takes you like one of my Uh, amazing inspirations and also a friend um Ishmael Butler from Shabazz Palaces he said to me to me or my brother once he said follow your music it'll take you wherever you need to go in life and that's if you're a musician right but really just follow your own follow your own instincts to for what you love for what you enjoy and that will take you everywhere that you need to go it's like god has created us with likes and dislikes so it's so simple it's like a little uh, mouse running we like little mouses running around in a little trap and we go to this one little thing and a little dead end and there's a little electronic buzz it's like ow i got buzzed it's horrible that hurts poor me my mouse little fingers are hurting and they're burnt my little mouse nails hurt so you come back and you go back and then you go to the other way and you find some cheese and you're like ha huh, i'm a mouse i like this cheese this cheese tastes very good it's a english cheddar you know it's irish kerry french brie or whatever kind of cheese it is and you're like let me get more of this i like this cheesy stuff and then you keep going you know and then you see different kinds of cheeses all over the world and you know maybe you're a crazy mouse and you get into like you get into rice and then eventually you get into like mantu and palau and you become go to afghanistan and you you get all this amazing food and your life gets better and better by following the things that you liked it's so simple and then one day there's a lady who's eating this mantu and you're like wow that lady's i love the way she eats man and then you end up marrying someone you know and it's like so everything in your life will literally snowball if you just be like what do i actually like not what do i say to people that i like not what do i present to other people that i like but what do i really like sometimes that's tough to answer cuz sometimes there's things that you know that clash between what you put out there as i am this i am and whatever i am or and then what you really are privately right and what you really like privately so we also have to have a little bit of compassion and acceptance of ourselves cuz hey we might like some stuff that we may not want to admit but better that you face that and be real with yourself whether it's good or bad and be like this is me this is what's who i am for better or worse i think so, i just want so is that right is that real i don't know what i just said yes 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 it is uh beautifully balanced cuz cuz then we come to a point where we think okay so uh, i like this form of my art and i like to write music i like to write novels and i like to make movies and uh, 
where, where do we see the difference of overconfidence that, okay, what I'm doing is actually really good, mm -hmm. but is it actually good? Because this satisfies me for sure. Yeah. Right? But is it actually giving out something meaningful? Because some people might be so delusional in the world that they think they can try a lot of things and it's good for them. It's good for them. But how do we judge what actually is good outside of what they think is it's, it's good? Well, it's tricky, you know, because, I mean, are you saying how do we judge what is good in terms of like, does it help the world or what are you saying? Yeah, your world, your society, your people, your beliefs, or, or the common well-being of for all. Because what's the point of art anyways? Isn't it something that we give out of ourselves to our community or society? A meaning for it could be a meaning of life or it could be a, a meaning of loving, and empathy. Yeah. Uh, but it is something which, which does impact the people outside of us. So if some people just go out and do whatever they uh, they do this this this, but how I, how would you get? I see what you're saying now. Um, but but the 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 tricky thing about this is that first of all we don't judge them as a short answer. That's the best answer is that they do what they do. There's a listen. There's a lot of art. Anyone who's like really really close to me knows I'm really critical of ninety nine percent of Beautiful. stuff. Beautiful. Right. I'm not like like oh this is all great man this is so cool everyone can do what they want no, like I have standards I have taste and I have my own taste I don't push it on anyone else but I'd like to think I have a pretty well informed taste on on what I like but it's really irrelevant the reason that I keep all that stuff in my personal thoughts or maybe my close friends might hear it is because I don't know what that dude making that whack music or that pretentious stuff I don't really know what he's been put here to do there are so many reasons it could be that someone in his little world or her little world is going to be really inspired by watching them do that and they might do something really amazing right i have a lot of people over the years that i've looked up to in terms of artists and people that i, I looked up to some of them i out i out, frankly speaking i outgrew them right a long time ago others they're still up there and i'm still chasing them right or like following in their footsteps so that's the way it goes. So you just never know what purpose uh, some, you know, someone has been given a divine purpose that we all have it. And that it's just not worth thinking about, I think, you know, um, because everyone, we're like ping pong balls. We hit each other with different kinds of energy and we bounce off each other with different kinds of uh, meaning and, you know, uh, power. And sometimes even those small little bounces, me passing by, a busker in New York City and be like, yeah, I like that, that's whack. Or being like, damn, that's good. Whatever it is, is um, there's reasons for it. And it's not just me and my reaction, it's everyone else. Like life is so complex. That's why we leave it to God, right? Because it's like only God could have made such a universe where there's like all these consciousnesses walking around, bumping into each other, having all kinds of crazy thoughts. Like literally the only, I mean, and this is what my teacher would have told me many times the only way that makes sense is to keep your head down and be like i've got enough problems right here to sort through without even thinking about you know anyone else's artistic integrity but i know i'm gonna follow what i love i'm gonna make the music i like and listen you talk about stuff helping the country helping the world there's a lot of people who probably look at me and be like well he could be doing more to help afghans or support afghans with this with his star but you know other people will see if they have a, my way of looking at it, they'll see how I'm doing my part in activism. It's not as direct, but it's indirect. So, you know, there are a million ways of looking at those things. I just think it's best to, um, like a buffet, Miles Davis said, music is like a buffet. You just take what you like and you leave the rest. Bravo, bravo, bravo. <laughs> you Thank know, you very much. It, it was, uh, again, a very well balanced uh, answer. And, uh, uh, a lesson, I should say, to, to a lot of us who are just learning about art and music and, and all 
source of arts. And, yeah. and of course, I can understand when you spoke about people talking about activism and, and what you're doing directly for your own people and your own. Yeah. That, 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 I mean, people point the finger. It is, it is, yeah. yeah we, uh, we're all doing our part, and, and, and no one has, has the right to judge. Uh, who is doing what or who needs to do what to, to help out because we know as Afghan we're all doing our part that's, that's for sure so uh, we'll start with talk tell me one experience of your rebellion that you've been rebellious because I see you and the first thought anyone when seeing you for the first time listening to what you say and reading what you write you're a very patient, very calm, very humble individual, very spiritual, very connected to your soul. But have you ever rebelled against, let's just say, society, your family, culture? Have I rebelled against family and culture? You did. Yeah, I guess, of course. Yeah, I rebel a lot, actually, you know, over the years. I used to, when I was at school, I went to this English school where you had to wear blazers and ties and all that crap, you know? I didn't really like that. So I used to take my tie and wear it on my head, you know, like a headband. And I would get in trouble. One day That's at school. Very <laughs> yeah, I was a gangster. And um, one day at school, we had this teacher called, I won't repeat her name because we, we had a rude name for her. I didn't use it, but everyone else referred to her in this way. It's, it's a rude word. Anyway, she was very strong. She was like a former military lady, and she had now become a teacher. And she was like this big, strong English woman, old. She had white hair. And um, she, everyone was, when she would walk past you in, this, in the corridors, in these long, cold English school corridors that I used to grow up in, you know, you, everyone would be scared of her because she had this strong presence. And she would look at you like you had done something wrong. She would like, the whole way she was passing you, she's like this. Yeah. Right, the whole way. And you hadn't done anything wrong, right? So yeah. I got I got annoyed with it after a while, I remember. And I had forgotten this until like a little reunion I had with a friend about 10 years ago. And he reminded me of the story, which is so hilarious. So one day, uh, and now I remember it like it was yesterday. But one day she was walking past us and I was like, I'm done with this lady looking at me like I'm some kind of like criminal and I haven't done anything wrong. I'm just walking down the corridor. So I decided to say something which was really different because I wanted to mess with her a little bit because she was a strong disciplinarian. She's like, you do wrong, I punish you. So I wanted to flip the roles a little bit. So what I did was she, she was walking towards me and my friend, Raja, who was the only other brown kid in the school. And um, I, as soon as she looked at me, um, as soon as she looked at me and with that suspicious look, I just went, oh, <gasps> And I grabbed my chest and I just fell down flat on the floor and I pretended to like faint <laughs> or like, you know, whatever. And I just lay there completely emotionless, completely still for about, um, you know, a minute or so. And she was like, she got freaked out. She said, is he okay? Is he okay? What should we do? And she started freaking out. She went crazy. It was like as if she felt guilty that her, her evil stare had like killed her. <laughs> <laughs> and so my friend remembered it for for the rest of his life he only told me this 10 years ago and reminded me of it i was like and when he told me about it instantly i remembered it i was like yeah because she was putting she was pushing us down you know in a certain way energetically she was like giving us that mean energy and i was like i just wanted to mess with her mind you know so a lot of rebe everything i've done man rebellion along the way like to this day i guess you know i don't i'm not proud of that because there is a lot of, um, there's so much wisdom in in following, right? There is the ayah in the Quran um, that's literally, uh, you know, obey, obey God, obey the Prophet, and obey those on authority amongst you, right? Bravo. So my teacher reminded me of that all the time. So it's like, you know, that's got two sides. That's got two sides. You know, like everything. I'm giving you all these balanced answers, bro. Sorry, I'm coming to this a balanced well, answer. Well, well, you say what you want to say. We're here to just it's, listen to you. It, it, no, man, it's uh, it's cool. But I mean, yeah, it's like that. You know, there's a time to rebel. I guess that's the point. There's a time to rebel and there's a time to conform. And, uh, you know, there's that film, Rebel Without a Cause. There's nothing worse than trying to be a rebel just for what? To be cool? How lame exactly. is that?
Yeah, how lame is that? You how know? lame is that? That's the code for today. How lame is that? How lame is that? I've been living in America too long, bro. <laughs> how lame is that? that beautiful, is, beautiful so stuff. Lame. Thank you very much. How lame. <laughs> All right, so, so, so this one really is particular for us Afghan. Afghan question. Yep. Okay, cool. That, that is Afghan. Uh, what kept your Afghan identity alive? What keeps my Afghan identity alive? I think it's, I could say all these things, you know, it's really just simple. It's my connection to my parents. That's all I have. Bravo. Bravo. That's all I have, Bravo. you know. I look at it increasingly pessimistically. I'm like, man, there's so much I don't have. You know, my father recently passed and it's like there's so much stuff that he didn't tell me. But, you know, you have to believe in, in you know, through destiny and everything that, I got exactly what I was meant to get, right? From from my parents, from my mother, from my father. I'm still getting from my mother. So it's like, you know, you. you I was joking with my friend Wazi now a few a few days ago. We were talking. Uh, I think she might be here. I might not. I don't know. Uh, hi, if she is. And um, we were talking about like she was saying this expression, this Afghan expression to me. I was like, I don't think I've heard that one before. And I told her, I was like, isn't it interesting that we forget that just because we're Afghans. Like we just assume that all these expressions are just common knowledge and they're not. They're like my parents, my my mom, for example, is incredibly, I mean, she's an artist, right? In her own way, without being an artist in the obvious way. She's very rebellious too. And she'll like, if I say certain things to her, like, do you know this expression? If I like check it with her, you know, she'd probably be say something to me like, yeah, I know that, but I don't like to use that expression, you know? So it's like, you really, you know, what is our culture? We could say all these things that we could commonly join on and we could learn about food. We could learn about Atan and all these cool things. And that's great because it'll bring us together. But ultimately, what is it? It's what your parents gave you because that's what's, if you're lucky enough to have parents and be raised, you know, in that way, you have that. What they give you comes with a different kind of power. Let's just put it that way. It's culture with an extra kind of layer of uh, juice to it or nourishment. Yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful. So, so it is fair to say we can agree that our parents are our source of culture, especially outside of Afghanistan. Yeah, man. What do, we, what do we have? We're far from home. Where are, where are we? Like, look at me. I don't even, sometimes I forget where I am. I've traveled so much. And I'm like, where have I, where have I arrived? Sorry, it looks like I'm giving you the finger here. Um, where have I arrived? <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, I forget sometimes, honestly. Like I, I, when I first moved from America, my hometown in England is like a beach town. For the first few months living in uh, in America, I used to hear the beach, like the ocean. And I'd wake up and I'd get confused where I was, you know? So it's like this thing that we call our Afghan identity, like it's so important, but, you know, and just imagine how African American people feel living in this country or African descendants in other countries, like that, how long has it been for them that they have not even known their home? It's, it, it brings to mind the, f the fact that we are these things, we are Afghan at the same time, we're something else too. And, you know, it gets me emotional saying it. I don't know why, but there's something else going on here. It's our soul, you know, cool. it's our spirit. It's our connection to, to the divine. And uh, that's that's what we bond on really ultimately, you know. We're lucky if we can have connection to culture, but it's the other stuff that really binds us. Um, yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful. And the other stuff, talking about that other stuff, the, <clears throat> the actual... Uh, meat and potatoes of Bela Shover actually got introduced to you and Hanum Siddiq. Uh, I've been chasing her as well. Of course, I've been harassing her as well. So sorry, Siddiq. If you're there, <laughs> you know that I have been. Uh, but as we have spoken earlier, that I, I would really love to to have the group this this whole uh, this whole band of Bela Show. To, to join me for life because that's a whole different uh, conversation that I want to have yeah. with the team of Bedar Show. I really want to go in depth of spirituality, like that's... really in depth of healing and, and soul searching and soul finding 
and all of that. What I've been trying for now is is to 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 get you, each and every one of you individually in a corner and know about you individually. So yeah. who you guys are, what you guys do, what you guys believe, what you guys practice, and then hopefully, hopefully, someday I'll be able to get you guys together, and then we'll talk about because I've got a lot to talk about, inshallah. Yeah. And, and, and that's, that's, that's where we will get the real meaning and your message of how uh, Afghans like yourself are actually doing activism for Afghanistan, which is very long-term, which is very home-hitting, which is very connecting to hearts and souls. So, so that's my purpose of trying to get you guys to come for it or so. But sure. I won't keep you for very long because I know it's, it's probably very late for you and you're tired. The last question for today. What has happened in Afghanistan and to Afghan people today, especially post, post the 90s, to say post 90s till now? How much are we Afghans at fault? We ourselves. Well, you know, the Sufi perspective is going to be always that you look at yourself, you know? Beautiful always that you've got to look at yourself. And so if I'm speaking, you know, I don't like to get into politics too much, but if I'm speaking that way with my brother and stuff, those are the conversations that we have. It's like, you know, if, and, and it's not because we want to push down and blame people. It's not that at all, but it's the opposite. It's like, you, we know, at least I can speak for myself. I know how great and powerful United people can be. I've seen it in dreams, I felt it, and I know it, right? And so when you see um, a people who are, um, people get the leaders they deserve. And again, this is not saying anything about people, my beautiful people, my people in my country, right? who've had so much difficulty, but there's a philosophical level to this that's probably too deep to get into now. But yeah, I think that's, we can not- If you can go into it a little bit, me, me yeah, a well, little bit, all right with it. It's, it's like this, I mean, and they're doing it in Afghanistan. The humble everyday people do this every day is that they look at themselves. They don't look outside. Some of them do, some of them shout and they scream in front of the cameras, like curse this person, curse, they curse everyone. But I think a lot of the people, most of the people that I saw when I was there, they, they suffer. And you know what suffering is? It's so beautiful when you see people. I mean, it's, it's not beautiful. That's just, it's a, I'm going deeper with it. It's not beautiful. Obviously, suffering is suffering. Nobody wants it. But in, in terms of what they represent to me, they represent, Afghan people represent what you were talking about patience earlier beauty faith that's what they represent and it's like it's very difficult for us to see that people to attain those levels of faith and beauty have been made to suffer so much and they have and there are political things that go into that there's giving your power up to you know foreign agencies and my dad spent his lifetime talking about all that stuff you know like and there's reclaiming your power for yourselves but at this point, let's be honest, we're very far from all of that. So it's like, what do we have left except but to look within? And to the extent that we look outside of us and see corrupt governments or simplistic fundamentalists, you know, or whatever it is who's ruling over us, what, what else can we do but look at that as an allegory and as a lesson for how we can improve ourselves, change our state, uh, make our faith more complete? You know, that's... It's really the only rational way because what are we going to do? Are we going to overthrow people? Is that what's going to happen? I don't think that's really likely. Are we going to stop the next superpower from coming in and having their way? If we get lucky, if God decides that that's the destiny, maybe that'll happen. If not, then maybe it'll be more. We don't have control in that sense unless, you know, and the big unless is unless we are all able to complete, completely look within and focus ourselves on our own faults and improving ourselves, then you could get to a point where you could see people coming together. I've seen it in, in my Sufi community. They come together over this beautiful, humble teacher who is the most humble man that I've ever known. And they've done amazing things. They've like changed like 
so much in American society. So it's like, there's only one way to do it. And that's, you know, pass this in basketball, you've got to pass the ball. If you exactly. pass around, you know, if everyone's trying to shoot all the time, you're not going to get much. And that's, that to me, that's the state of activism these days. Everyone's trying to be in like, you know, like, look at me, I'm doing this and look at you, I'm doing that. And you're not doing this. And oh, I'm, do. <laughs> it's not going anywhere. I'm sorry to say it. You know, like these are all great people who are doing their best, but that's not going to go anywhere. And so people, you know, I, I'll say what I say. People may not like it and uh, that's fine. I know that history is, is I know which way it goes, right? You know, all you have to do is like read Dostoevsky, read people like that who understand about revolutions and understand about the the short sightedness of like revolutionary mindset sometimes. And they can understand that, you know, there is a spiritual aspect to the struggles and difficulties that we have. And wow. that's the only mature way to look at it ultimately, you know, that's just that's just it. You know, but it's Subhanallah, difficult. Subhanallah. It's difficult. So, always, always words of wisdom, words of wisdom. Of course, if people, if people disagree or don't like what you say, it means that they haven't found themselves yet. They haven't well, actually found the meaning of what is actually right and what is soul and what soul speaks of. I'll tell you a very small story before we finish this beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, it's been so nice. Thank you. My pleasure, my pleasure, and I'm honored, Ustada Khan, dear teacher. I was working in, in a very well-renowned uh, uh, American-led uh, company uh, okay. in Afghanistan uh, called USAID, and I was working in a pretty, uh, I should say, privileged uh, desk. And we had some subcontractors, local subcontractors coming to work for us. And one of them was from one of these renowned Hanakas in Kabul, very renowned. And he was a very young guy. And he was on that stage where, where he was about to be the leader of that specific Hanaka. Uh, and he was a beautiful individual, same age as me. A very humble, very broken down person, and uh, at that time I was I was uh, uh, in my peak of being this rock star of Afghanistan. Right, we were metalheads, very extreme genre, extreme messages, very loud voices, extreme personality, especially me because I was a frontman. And I, I, I carried that persona because it was just me. I wasn't showing anything or acting. It was just me. It's always been me. So when he came to our office and then we got to talk and blah, 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 blah. Then he was like, what music do you listen? I was like, I listen to melodic death. Right? And he was like, I want to try that. I was like, sure, my friend. Why not? I would love to share it with you. And I gave, it, and I gave him my headphones. I can't really remember which band it was it. He took it and he sat in the cobble sun of the noon. Was there Barhon, Sarakasesta, the 13th Street? He okay. sat down and he listened to it. And he was doing headbanging, right? <laughs> okay. Naturally. He was doing headbanging. Now, for me, it was like, dude, you're headbanging. Are you? I mean, I headbang. That's natural, right? But he was doing it he just headbanging. Yeah. He was doing it and he was saying, Allahu, Allahu, Allahu. Because when he finished and he was like, I like this music. And he was like, it has the rhythm. <laughs> and I go into, into the space where I lose myself and I talk to my Lord and I remember all this, this, this verses of Quran and these teachings and my khanaqa and all that. And I just went into that feeling. Well, so that was the day because my manager, God, God bless him, I wish him all the best in, in a long life. He was a Sufi. His forefathers came from uh, Bukhara and uh, he was a part of this Hanaka and he was a beautiful human being. He taught me so much and, 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 and he, he, he kind of treated me as his, his uh, nephew if Nothing more. 
because I was a wild kid and and he was this this knowledgeable individual with so much knowledge or Sufism and spirituality mm-hmm. and Quran and Hadith, but he used to treat me so well and he was so understanding. That that's when it hit me actually. What's spirituality? What's Sufi? Uh, what is all these Khanakas and their way of living and their way of religion and their way of seeing the world and treating the people and whatnot? So 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 that that was one of the most most connecting I think experiences of, of coming with the people of 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 the um, I should say uh, the spiritual realm of Afghanistan, uh, yeah. uh, the people of uh, Tariqat. Tariqat. And that's why when I saw you for the first time, that's the same feeling I got. From. And and I'm so honored and I'm so humble yeah, and, and I right. cannot thank you enough. Thank you. I cannot thank you enough. I cannot thank, thank you, you enough so. to be here with yeah. us today to give me the opportunities and the people around me and around yourself to get to know a little bit more about you. Hopefully they have. Uh, and I know that you opened up some, some things about yourself and experiences which made us laugh, made us think, and made us more mature than we were probably an hour ago. Last, last takeaway for today was thought Yusuf Yoshi Mesta as an author, as a musician, as a filmmaker, as a beautiful spiritualist and a Sufi. Most of all, as an Afghan, what would you give our people for today? What would you tell them? Oh, man. Look at you, Mr. Cool. Um, you're a cool I'm dude. sorry about that. I'm no, so no, sorry. No, I smoke no, no, a lot no. when I'm very nervous. So Thank I'm you. sorry about that. No, no, no. Thank you so much. I, I, I don't know, man. I feel like everything that we've said, I feel like we've touched on it all. I just want to... I just want to be thankful to you i'm feeling i'm feeling the same things uh, i get emotional a little bit talking and it's usually the person that i'm connecting with talking to that that'll do that to me so there's something in you as uh, it's a uh, believers are mirrors to each other that's what the hadith says um, so we are mirrors to each other and i'm really thankful for you to give me the opportunity to talk a little bit oh, and, yeah i don't i'm oh, private dude i'm a very private dude i don't like talking about all these things about my life it comes out with you, you know, so I appreciate it. And if anyone else, if anyone else really? listens, yeah, man, and hopefully, it, like you said, if people listen, they listen, if it gets, if they get something from it, you know, well, last thing we're, we're here short, we're here real short time. It's moving real quick. You know, uh, ones we love today may not be here tomorrow. So we have to have that mentality of, um, in the trenches, like this is it. Today's the day do it you know i'm telling everyone that right now looking right in the camera now just do it whatever it is that you've got on your mind whatever it is that you're trying to do whatever it is that you are going for what you're dreaming for you can do it and i'm saying that very loud and clear and repeating it you can do it whatever it is there's nothing that you can yeah. start it begin it make a plan and uh don't procrastinate because we're not in the time of wasting time anymore that time is gone we would me, me and my bro here maybe live through some of that time, lazy in the 90s and 80s maybe, but we're not there anymore. This is a serious time right now, and you've got to be who you are, as I was saying earlier. So so get to it. Nike's, Nike's slogan, just do it. That's so my, right. <laughs> my takeaway, bro. Thank so you, so. Right. Yeah, so yeah. Right. Thank you very much, Osada Khan. Thank you very much, Osada. Thank you, my bro. Yusuf, you wish the talk. Of course, we could talk for hours and hours we could. and days. We could days on end and we cannot stop learning from your wisdom and from your beautiful soul so I can, you again too. thank you very much for giving me the honor and our people the honor to to listen to uh, what you've said and what you've shared with us out of your years of experience that you've collected through hard hard work and self compromisation and sacrifices of course world experience cannot come without self sacrifice so thank you very much Ustada Khan hopefully hopefully I will be able to get you back with your team of Pedar Shrine we're going to go Inshallah. do me a favor please to, to save this video I will, I will save this video and send it to me so I can share it with my own people Inshallah last okay. last word that I cannot say anything after that you have said is God bless our spiritual people God bless mm-hmm. people like yourself 
listen to our our young masters of today, like Ustad Yusuf, because they can relate to the past and present, and they can tell us about the future. So, so we're all doing our part, and Ustads, as like Ustad Yusuf, Mustaf, they're doing their part. They're doing their they're very well, very very well uh, worked and and well uh, efforted uh, for their own people. Well, Afghanistan, listen to them and trying to implement it in your life. This is today. Do not waste this moment. Do not waste your life. Do not waste this present today. Work for the future. Work for your people. If they've come out as immigrants or they're there today on the ground, please work for them. Forget about your traumas. Forget about your anger, ethnical clashes, tribal enmities. Forget about all that. So find yourselves love yourself, love your people. Usad Yusuf, thank you very much. Brother, I'm honored. Thank you very, very much. Hope to see you again. I wish the luck for your travels. Hope you have peace. God bless. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Voices from the mountains and Usad Yusuf, we're out here today. Thank you very much. God bless. Assalamu alaikum.